All right, everybody. Here today we've got a 1979 Chevy K20. I need to replace the master cylinder on. Today I'm going to be working on taking it off. There's not really a whole lot of magic to this, but thought maybe someone would like to see it. it might help someone out. So here we go. I've uh, I've checked the size wrench that I need on these fittings here on the master cylinder to take the brake lines off. And there's one more forward than the other but they're both 9 16 wrenches. Uh, rather than taking out fluid from the top of the master cylinder I'm going to attempt to loosen these brake lines and then catch the fluid. As you can see looking at the vacuum powered brake booster I have a lot of brake fluid that's been running out right where the master cylinder meets the uh, vacuum brake booster in the back and uh, I believe I've got a bad o-ring inside the master cylinder so I got a part online coming and I'm just gonna get it ready today by taking the master cylinder off and we'll go from there All right, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to try to break this loose first. Using the 9 16 tubing wrench. Oh. I broke it loose from the master cylinder, but, but it doesn't want to turn freely at the, uh, at the tubing, at the brake tube. I don't want to mangle that up too bad. I might have to put more uh, penetrating lube on there. Try the back one. See where we're at on that. Same thing on the back one. Oh. If I keep turning that, that's going to twist that off. And then I'll be replacing those too. Have to come up with something for that. Looks like the nuts on the vacuum brake booster, or that hold the master cylinder to the vacuum brake booster, are going to be larger than 9 16 So I'll grab a 5 8 Five eighths feels really sloppy on there. Nine sixteenths doesn't go on. In my head, 15 millimeter shouldn't be on a 1979, but it's the best fit I've got, so what do I know? Man, that's really on there. Can't get the 15 millimeter socket in there. It's always good. Mm. Mm. Try a big adjustable wrench, but 
that's just going to round it out. Big channel locking pliers, tongue and groove pliers. It might mar up the nut, but I don't really care about that. Guess we can try it. All right, made it back with the uh, tongue and groove pliers. Let's see if I can get that. Ouch. Oh, that's why you want a good one. Tongue and groove pliers skipped a tooth. Let's see if I can tighten that nut, prevent it from doing it again. Oh. Nope, that's no good. Maybe a large adjustable wrench before I go looking for that. I better re-up the liquid wrench brand penetrating oil. Not trying to plug them, it's just the one I like. I have to get the one off the other side too. Let them soak while we're doing that. Alright, made it back with a, an adjustable wrench. This one's a 10 inch do it best. I've had this thing for a long time. I like it. You can get a lot of leverage on it and the jaw stays where it's supposed to be. But it ain't enough. Nope. Hmm. On to something else. expensive what do you call this tubing crow's foot wrench I don't know I'm probably wrong on that correct me if I'm wrong put it in the chat oh it's five ace though I forgot that tongue and groove pliers was metric that adjustable wrench was metric but this one here is five ace maybe I can still get it with it it's pretty sloppy but it's six point and give it a try. Worse that happens is it doesn't work. <clears throat> nope. Just wants to spread and skip. If a person had a 15 millimeter one of those, maybe. Back to the wrenches. Maybe I can use a, a wrench and uh, and a hammer, give it some taps, kind of a impact wrench style. fits real good on there. We're going to give that some taps. Seems like it's moving. Just at the end there a little bit. There's nowhere to swing in here.
I don't know if it helps or not, but that's what it took to get this one off. You may have to do that or come up with something. foot might not be the worst idea surprise it's 15 millimeter and 1979 what do I know Attempt to get the the far one. Where'd my wrench go? There it is. I don't know how well this will work. I want it up higher so I can beat on it. There we go. Make sure it's on there real good. I'll strip out that that nut. Good enough. if I loosen this up too far we're gonna have all the brake fluid coming out the back where it's been leaking anyhow instead of where those lines are so I can catch it with this uh, fancy McDonald's non-sponsored recyclable cup I don't know if it's recyclable or not but today we're recycling it as catch can We got a lot of drips coming out the back there where, where it meets the vacuum brake booster. Well, I've been spraying these nuts now and where the tubing meets the, the nut. And it still doesn't want to break loose from the tubing. That's what happens from years of Maybe I can clamp to it. I see if I wiggle it, it's got plenty of wiggle to it. Maybe not enough. Hard to say. If I just keep turning, it'll probably twist it. Yep, it's twisting it. it probably doesn't do me any good to channel lock it here. It'll just clamp it, but gotta do something. this pipe here. I just have to order new ones. <sighs> it's always something. That's why this thing has taken so long <clears throat> to get done. Yeah, it's just going to twist off. See it? Oh, there it broke loose. So even though we twisted it quite a bit, now that nut's loose from the pipe. Looks like maybe about a third to half a turn I twisted it. You know, I'm not above it. I'll try running it. Put it on the new one. We'll see if it leaks. If it leaks, I'll worry about replacing it. Might be A-OK. -okay. Might be junk. Hard to say. Thought there'd be a lot more liquid than that. None is a little short of what I thought. Might be it all leaked out before I got here. Try to set that up underneath. The G 
GM certified brake cap opening tool here. Ouch. There we go. Now it's leaking. Try to keep some of this from ending up on the shop floor. We'll put this cap up here. We won't need it. The new one comes with one. It's okay. I'll forget about it up there anyhow. Let's see if I can wedge this in somewhere. It's catching it. That way it'll fill up and then spill all over. And I'm sure if I push the brakes, it's going to come spraying out too. And get all over everything. This one's going to twist off. Oh, come on. Yeah, three quarters of a twist into it already. Doesn't appear to be breaking loose. can't be good for it, having that twist in there, but so what? It's not my daily driver. Even if it was my daily driver, I'm not above it. without turning the tube. I don't know how much of that you can see. Let me grab the camera. Wipe my hands off first. So, as we get close here, you see now I'm turning the nut, but the tubing isn't turning. That's what we want. We wanted that from the start, but the tube is corroded to the nut so bad it took getting it loose and coating it with penetrating lube to make it do what we wanted it to do. And we still twisted the tubing around. I don't know if you can see it there. You see the lines of twist on that tube. It might just be blurry. I don't know. Alright. That's what we're looking at here. Still got some fluid to get out of there. I'm guessing if I'm not pushing the brakes, the valve system to go to these lines is closed. That would only make sense. You're not pushing fluid into the brake lines unless you're pushing the brakes. So I should be able to take this off and maybe just turn it over to get that brake fluid out of there. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that works out. You'll see how that works out. I'll set this back down. Okay. For those of you new to my channel, I'm going to try to get a couple of these types of videos up each week, mostly on this and other things around here. Uh, old tractor, a bunch of old implements. This stuff that needs fixing. This truck we're going to try to get ready for the uh, Labor Day mud races coming up here in a few weeks. Not sure if I'll have it roadworthy by then. We'll find out. Maybe I can even get the races on. Uh, on video. Need a step stool to get up in here. Put these 33 inch tires on. TSL Super Swamper Boggers. 33 by 10 and a half by 15. So three quarter ton though. So they're on Eaton brand conversion rims. 
I believe it's a three inch offset, eight bolt pattern, but a 15 inch rim. I bought them years and years ago. Just pulled them out of the box this year, getting it ready. Had to put the tires on. Oh, yep, there it spilled. Knew it was going to happen. I have to do some cleanup in here. Once the truck's out of the way, maybe I can get all this dirt pulled out of here. Coarse gravel under the truck. It's around, but it sucks to lay on. It. Before you start a project like this, you should uh, consider putting in a concrete floor. You can use a creeper or not, but at least then you're not laying on gravel. Every time you go into the truck, you get dirty. You get pieces of gravel in your knee when you bend over. It never seems to sit right. The jack doesn't seat on it well. Jack stands don't stay where you put them. If you're looking at doing this sort of project, save up first, put in a concrete floor. Little recommendation. We'll see what makes it in this monologue to the final cut. Just rambling. Here we go. There's a nut, perfect for losing somewhere. Now I've already got the master cylinder ordered. Were you to do this and then, ask, and then order the master cylinder, may take some time to get to you. You might have to do your research on which one to get. So if it sits for a long time, you probably don't want to leave these nuts just sitting where they can fall over. Since I got mine coming, it should only be here in a couple of days, I'm okay with just setting them on the radiator. Won't be driving this truck. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if I can get that bracket off of there. I don't know about your vehicle, but ow. Try that again. If your uh, if your vehicle, yeah, has this bracket, it's under quite a bit of pressure. Looks to be about seven sixteenths steel. I don't know if you can see this. Let me get that camera. Way down in there, there's a a bolt. I'm going to loosen that up so that this can loosen up also. Let's see here. start with assuming it's a 15 millimeter. No, there's no way to get that in there. Hmm. Probably not going to be able to get it loose. Jeez. you got to be kidding me. There we go. Oh. Nope. So that's going to have to sit and soak. We'll just have to bend it. Always the hard way. Yeah, we'll just bend it instead of sitting and soaking it. It's my bigger screwdriver. Oh well. <laughs> Come on. It's really on there. So 
such a long stud too. I'm gonna have to soak it. <sighs> Story of my life. Hurry up and wait. Try to give that five or ten minutes. All right. We sat for a little while soaking. This isn't going to work, but we'll give it a try. The wheel wells in the way. Luckily, I know my wheel wells are rusted completely off. I think I can pull this down and get that wheel well out of my way. Oh, this one's got one bolt holding the whole thing in yet. Guess we can't do that. Good spot for a bolt, Chevy. You guys should put them all right there. Let's see here. How can I? So I'm going to try to loosen up the fender. That'll probably twist off. It's all rusted anyhow. Five-eighths is going to be real loose on there again. Try that five-eighths crow's foot. A little disappointing, but whatever. Well, sometimes you just need a little bit of leverage. So, whatever you do, don't do what I'm about to do. If this 24-inch uh, pipe wrench wrench doesn't uh, doesn't do the trick, I got a 36-inch flat bar. So where's my flat screwdriver? It's getting hung up on those threads. You guys see it? I misplaced it. Hanging out in here somewhere. There we go. You guys can probably skip this part of the video. This is more embarrassing than anything. If you drag the slider at the bottom of the screen, you should be able to see when I get it off. Come back and join us there. It'll come, but it isn't easy. Gonna end up messing up that vacuum booster.
pry bar. Be right back. You know, it's amazing when you go to look for something, you can't find it. Find it a hundred times while you're looking for something else. It's not the thing you're looking for. It's under a lot of pressure. Like I said, it's not like this is the right way to do it. Right way to do it would be to figure out some way to get your wrench in or get some leverage on a wrench. Take that bottom nut off so it's loose. You know, if you can't do it the right way, at least do it the wrong way. Almost there. celebrate that we got it but it wasn't right it made a mess all sorts of this is messed up now that's okay we got the part should just pull straight out aside from that bar that's under so much pressure there we go really hung up on those threads too there we go Master cylinder, there's nothing nothing connecting it at least to the to the truck. I mean, aside from those bolts in that bracket, but not really. Let's see if I can pour this in there. There we go. Keep some of it off the floor, I guess. Now I ordered I ordered a replacement one of these online. It was only $37 plus shipping and there's no uh, no core charge on it so I'm just gonna throw this in the scrap iron bin if a person wanted to rebuild it you see we have an inside uh, snap ring and then that would allow some of these internal parts to come out this one here I think just needed an o-ring somewhere inside I didn't want to spend the time or messing around with it to replace it and then find something else that's bad. So for $37 plus shipping, I got a new one coming in the mail from from online. It's a AC Delco brand, so it should hold up at least as well as this one looked equivalent. I don't know if this one was stamped. Oh, yeah, there's the rest of that fluid I was looking for. I don't see the stamp on this one for Made in USA, but the AC Delco one I got coming it says Made in USA on it. Now I just gotta hose everything down in here. Just give it a shot of brake cleaner. Blast it all off. This stuff, like brake cleaner, is really corrosive, but could be worse. So we'll get this out of here. You know, it sounds kind of stupid, but I didn't think it'd go that well. Fluid could be better. Since I'm not going to be running this anytime soon, and the brake cleaner claims on the can, non-flammable, no inflammable, we're going to give it a shot. We'll see what happens.
looks pretty good in there, really. I don't know. Did I miss a spot? That ain't going to be good for it. Now to help it dry, I'm going to use some compressed air, like you should do. And we're just about out of air there. Just the per perfect amount for cleaning off all this. A little bit of cleaning up. So now that we got all the brake fluid off, I'd like to give it a soak with something oil-based. Maybe keep some of the stuff from rusting a little bit. I'm looking around and I'm not seeing any out here. I guess. Give her a shot of some pea blaster. I know it ain't right, but she'll drip dry before I get the uh before I get the uh new master cylinder in. Head down on the frame. I mean what's the worst that happens? Maybe I gotta take those bolts out someday. Oh no. Maybe it prevents a little corrosion. Oh no. I don't know what's going on in there either. Can you see in there? Ooh, not really. Let me get you a better shot of that. That's a little sketchy. Balancing it like that. Maybe like that. I'm going to go into the truck and push the brake pedal. And maybe we can tell if that moves. try to get this video uploaded and you guys can take a look at it ask me some questions I'll try to answer them um, you can critique it tell me what I did wrong I know what I did wrong <laughs> go ahead and tell me and uh, I'll try to get back to your input on it otherwise watch for part two when we put the master cylinder back in all right. Thanks for watching. If you care to, like and subscribe. Never hurts. Thanks again.